a very good evening to all uh, great leaders i mean great teachers and seniors actually so this is our next session of the journal club by iap toronto i mean we have been uh, doing good uh, for the past few times and this is the sixth event and each time we are selecting a different category of study actually that is very interesting because one time it is a cohort study sometimes it is an observational study and all and we have our ramkutty sir always with us to lead and guide us actually and this is a dream project of our uh, iap toronto president uh, dr dukmini madam sandar so today's event also will be a very interesting one because uh, clinically it is a very uh, interesting it is a, a topic from newborn uh, area so before uh, we start our session i would like to invite dr rukmini madam to uh, give a uh, talk a few words about uh, uh, today's program madam please madam dr rukmini madam M mute anna madam hmm. good yes. evening everybody uh, respected respected ramagutti sir padnaman sir prishottaman sir vinoy kuriyoko sir and uh, our own anchu kanmani uh, i just wanted to say a few words here because i was not able to be there for the last two events continuously because of my own personal reasons last time i was a bit late but still i could uh, come for the journal club and uh, as anchu kanmani said uh, this was our dream project and uh, we are reaching our fag end of our uh, Uh, term this year is coming to an end so maybe we'll have another session in november so i uh, no. why i am here particularly today is uh, i would like to invite everybody for the gb which will be conducted in the last week of uh, this month uh, so as i said earlier we are coming to the fag and the power tenure so i would like to meet everybody there in person Uh, so please be there for the gb uh, that is why i came particularly in the beginning itself today without uh, wasting your time much uh, all the best for the program and uh, we'll go directly to the program now thank you so much madam for gracing the occasion and uh, i would like to welcome dr punik madam uh, ap toronto president uh, dr amguti sir uh, um, patnavel sir Uh, dr sundar singh sir dr prajit sir uh, dr binoy sir uh, dr prashanthan sir and the post graduates and all others to this event uh, they may not be known dr amguti sir he is a emeritus professor of, at achyutamenon center sir is a don in uh, research and uh, sir is a, a member of the planning commission or i mean the uh, planning board also and sir has been there uh, uh, with us so sir will be giving the expert comments on the article and uh, sundar singh sir sir is associate professor of pediatrics and sir is a neonatologist neonatologist at uh, karakonam uh, medical college uh, sir is a mentor one of the mentors uh, sir has completed his mbbs from toronto and has completed his, his neonatology and uh, md pediatrics sir has been a product of lithiana uh, um, and uh, one of the other mentor is dr givargis prajit prasad sir is associate professor in pediatrics at karakonam and sir has been uh, has done his mbbs at gmc miraj maharashtra and uh, md pediatrics from aurangabad maharashtra then uh, um, patpadam sir is a uh, coordinator of the journal club sir is a uh, now consultant at the prs uh, hospital and sir is a uh, was has worked abroad and has worked in teaching centers sir has worked as a faculty in medical college also and uh, we our the two post graduates uh, we have here uh, were dr haripriya haripriya hs the man is a post graduate uh, at uh, karakonam medical college and dr shilpa mariam a uh, post graduate at karakonam medical college so without i uh, mean uh, losing any time we will uh, directly go to the uh, article proper and i would like to uh, request dr hari priya just to present the article before us so over to hari priya good evening to all welcome to the jana club for this month i am dr hari priya uh, junior resident from dr sncsm medical college karakonam uh, the topic for <coughs> jana club of this month will be on predictors of mortality in neonatal pneumonia and international clinical epidemiology network childhood pneumonia study conducted by the department of pediatrics neonatology and microbiology in two public sector hospitals the background of this study is that 
Neonatal pneumonia is one of the leading cause of morbidity and mortality in neonates. Lot of risk factors are present, which helps us to assess the morbidity and mortality. This study is selected because it helps to correlate different predictors causing mortality in pneumonia. Uh, objectives of the study. The primary objective was to find out the predictors in neonatal mortality in neonatal pneumonia. And the secondary outcome was to find out the blood culture positivity rate, both bacterial and fungal, in uh, neonatal pneumonia. Uh, study protocol. The study design, it is an observational study under the category uh, cohort study. It's a prospective type of cohort study. The expected sample size was 915, in which the samples enrolled to the study were 500. Uh, sample size after exclusion was 476 out of 500. The study participants include both term and preterm infants. Uh, before starting the study, consent from the parent was taken along with blood culture, nasopharyngeal aspirate and chest x-ray prior to admission. Uh, now the chest x-ray findings they have taken into consideration were nodular or host, patchy non-homogeneous infiltrates or air bronchogram lobar, multi-lobar or segmental consolidation. And if there was any clinical in indication, echocardiography was also done. Incidence of fungal positivity was confirmed by the molecular diagnosis MALDI-TOF, which is a matrix-assisted laser desorption bar ionization. Statistics was done with the help of chi-square test and student t-test, binary logistic regression analysis using SPSS 20, version 22. Now the inclusion criteria include all newborns uh, uh, diagnosed with characteristic clinical features along with the radiological features suggestive of pneumonia. Exclusion criteria is based on uh, history of uh, meconium aspiration syndrome, history of congenital anomalies of the respiratory system, previous history of hospitalization for the past 24 hours, and any history of administration of antibiotics. The predictors evaluated in this study include social demographic factors, maternal age, maternal fever, parity, mode of delivery, clinical features at admission and during the course of hospitalization, and microbiological characteristics of the isolates. Uh, about the sample allocation, eligible neonates were 915, of which 415 got excluded. And finally, the enrolled newborns were 500, of which they have lost follow-up of about 24 neonates. Now, the neonates include, included for outcome analysis were 476, of which 437 survived and 39 died. And now, the results here, uh, they are comparing both the survivor and the non-survivor group. First, about the enrollment details. Here, uh, there was a higher proportion of uh, low birth weight and preterm infants in the non-survivor group. Now, the second part of this table is about the clinical findings, uh, which they have taken into consideration, of which I have taken uh, five clinical findings, that is temperature more than 37.5 degrees Celsius, breathing difficulty, Silverman Anderson score, cyanosis and SpO2 of less than 90. Coming to the third part about the blood culture positivity rate. The blood culture positivity rate was higher among the non-survivor group, both uh, uh, bacterial and fungal. Both fungal also uh, were higher in the non-survivor group. Among this blood culture positivity, gram-negative organisms isolated were higher, whereas the viral PCR positivity rate was higher in the survivor group. Now, the observations in this study were uh, about 52% were from uh, upper lower socioeconomic status, whereas 41.7% were from lower middle class. The commonest symptom uh, they have identified were feeding difficulty, about 46%, followed by fever, about 23%. Common signs were tachypnea with a mean respiratory rate of 63 uh, per minute, and the median Silverman Anderson score at the time of admission was 4 with the interquartilar range between 3 to 6. And on admission, 60% uh, of the neonates required oxygen, with 28% being started on CPAP and 55, uh, 55 that is 11% required intubation. 
about the blood culture positivity rate there was high amount of viral isolates uh, mainly in the survival group most common being respiratory syncytial virus type b strain the overall blood culture positivity rate was 19.2 percentage and uh, there were more of gram negative organism uh, klebsiella being the most common organism isolated and was seen in 22 neonates that is about 23 percent uh, and about 28 percentage of the neonates showed fungal growth with candida species and uh, about 38 percentage of the neonates were positive for viral pcr and among the 100 healthy term neonates seven were found to have an asymptomatic viral colonization with influenza b5 h1n1 and both influenza a and uh, b1 uh, coming to the discussion part uh, the blood culture positivity rate was found to be an independent predictor of mortality and the mortality rate in this study was about 8.2 percentage and the organisms isolated in the study were klebsiella candida and respiratory syncytial virus type b the most common symptoms uh, they have found uh, were feeding difficulty about 46 percent and fever about 23 percent the most common sign includes uh, tachypnea with a mean respiratory rate of 63.7 and breathing difficulty with uh, silverman anderson score of 4 uh, now in a similar study conducted by the delhi neonatal uh, infection study the blood culture positivity rate uh, of their study was similar to this study uh, and uh, in this particular study the 50 percentage of isolates were positive for klebsiella and similar studies conducted in various hospitals in asia showed an uh, positivity rate of 30 percentage for respiratory syncytial virus coming to the conclusion part of the study uh, they have found blood culture positivity in neonatal pneumonia as an independent predictor of mortality. Uh, vaccination against uh, respiratory syncytial virus immediately after the birth may be a potential strategy to lower the burden of neonatal pneumonia. Coming to the limitations, the samples are lost polar, which also should be taken into account. Other microbial etiological agents like mycoplasma, chlamydia, and pneumococcus were not evaluated in this study. Thank you. Excellent presentation, uh, Doctor. Now we will go to the analysis part. I would like to uh, request Doctor to present the analysis part. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'll be doing the analysis part of the journal. I'm Dr. Shilpa Mariam John, second year junior resident from Dr. SNCSM Medical College. So for analysis, we'll be using a checklist called a stop checklist. I'll go come to the stop checklist one by one. So for an observational study, it is a type of epidemiological study design, which can take the form of a cohort, a case control, or a cross-sectional study. The full form of STROP is strengthening the reporting of observational studies in epidemiology. So this guideline consists of 20 list items that the author needs to fulfill before submitting the manuscript to a journal. This is a stock checklist, which we'll be going one by one. So the first one will be title and abstract. So the title of the study is Predictors of Mortality in Neonatal Pneumonia, an England Childhood Pneumonia Study. So the title should indicate the study design with a commonly used term in the title or the abstract. So from the study, the type of the study is understood from the title. Next is a structured summary of the trial design, results and conclusions should be there. So as we can see in the abstract, they have clearly defined the study design, the objective, participants, intervention, results and conclusions. So the abstract gives an informative and balanced summary of what was done and what was found. Next is introduction, which includes the background and rationale. So first is the scientific background and explanation of rationale, which is done clearly in this study. We have told that the neonatal pneumonia, which accounts for a very, uh, accounts for 2 percentage of the under 5 mortality rate in children in the world. So the study is relevant. Next is specific objectives. Uh, they have taken into account the clinical features, microbiological characteristics and other risk factors that predict the mortality or, uh, in neonatal pneumonia. So the rational and the scientific background behind the study is well explained and it describes the focus. And the specific objectives are also mentioned clearly. Next is the methods. Under methods, first comes the study design. So it should present the key elements of the study design early in the paper. 
So we can see they have mentioned the study type, that is observation study, under the category cohort study. What type of cohort? They have mentioned it as prospective and they have also mentioned the inclusion exclusion criteria. So all these are mentioned under the heading methods. Next is settings. So they should describe the setting, locations and relevant dates, including the periods of recruitment, exposure, follow-up and data collection. We can see they have mentioned it as a multi-center prospective cohort study conducted into tertiary level public sector hospitals. So all these are mentioned. Next, under the heading participants, they should give the eligibility criteria and the sources and methods of selection of the participants. All these have been clearly mentioned. So the eligibility criteria, method of selection and exclusion are explained well under the heading methods. Next comes to the variables. So it should clearly define all the outcomes, exposures, predictors, potential confounders, and effect modifiers. So the outcomes they are measuring include the first primary outcome is predictors of neonatal mortality and the secondary outcomes include the blood culture positivity rate in neonatal pneumonia. So when we come to the statistics, they have included the categorical variables that includes ordinal uh, variables like social class and nominal variables like gender. And under continuous variables, they have included duration of hospital stay, etc. And they were able to uh, include most of the confounding factors. Next is data sources and measurements. So for each variable of interest, they should give the source of data and details of the method of assessment. So here they have mentioned as categorical variables being tested by using chi-square test and continuous variables being tested by student t-test, which is the correct statistical method to be used. And for multiple categorical data, they have used logistic regression test. They have used odds ratio or risk ratio in the study. The so using of odds ratio always overestimates the risk and the estimation becomes larger with larger instances of the outcomes. So this can lead to a misinterpretation of result, but at some point of the study, we can see they have used adjusted odds ratio also, which is acceptable. Next is bias. They should distract any efforts which they, have, which they have taken to address the potential source of bias, but they have not mentioned it. Uh, instead, they have mentioned that they have uh, encountered a bias, that is radiological bias, which was already mentioned in the journal. Other biases encountered here include loss to follow up, leave against medical advice, absconded patients, information bias, where the treating doctors were not blinded to the clinical features, and that doesn't state how the cohorts were recruited, and also the method of sampling and stratification. Next is study size. So they should explain how the study size was arrived at. They have clearly explained the parental study and they have quoted it also how the sample size was calculated. So with their parental study, they needed a sample of 1,500 neonates, but because of the time constraints, uh, they have done an interim analysis, which means uh, after a particular period of collection of data, they have done analysis of that data and with that results, they have collected, uh, they have calculated the new sample size uh, to 606. Next is quantitative variables and the statistical methods. All these are mentioned clearly in the journal. Next is the participants. So uh, in the journal, they should uh, report the number of individuals at each stage of the study and should give reasons for non-participation at each stage. All these have been clearly mentioned in a well-structured flow diagram. As we can see, 915 participants were eligible and of, of which 415 were excluded due to all the particular reasons they have mentioned. And out of the 500 enrolled, 24 uh, were excluded because of the LAMA and absconded. So the author report the number of missing values for each variable of interest and for each step in the analysis and gives reasons for the missing values also. Next is descriptive data that includes the social demographic features of the participants. They have mentioned it very clearly and as we can see all the, all the values falls in between the 95 percentage uh, confidence index. And it should indicate the number of participants with missing data which they have mentioned and summarize the follow up time. Next is outcome data. It should report the number of outcome events or summarize the measures over time. Uh, which they have done, but though they have done the outcome and even uh, this table they have given only for their secondary outcome. And this is the clinical features they have matched, which we can see uh, the most common clinical feature being feeding difficulty and most common symptom being fever. 
Next is made result. They should give unadjusted estimates and if applicable, confirm the adjusted estimates, which at some point of uh, uh, the study they have given, and they should report the category boundaries which they have done. And if relevant, consider translating estimates of relative risk into absolute risk, which is not done here. Next is other analysis. They should report the other analysis which they have done with the data, but they have not done it because the studies um, stick to its primary and secondary objectives. Next is discussion. Uh, they have summarized the key results with reference to the subject objectives. You can see it clearly. With quoting, uh, with, by quoting uh, similar studies, they have mentioned the discussion very well. Next is limitations. So the limitations which they have mentioned include inability to enroll the original plan 1,500 units due to logistic constraints, and they were not able to isolate other etiological agents like mycoplasma, chlamydia, and pneumococcus. And the investigators involved in the interpretation of X-rays were not blinded to the clinical features. So our assumed interpretation analysis has shown the following limitations. One is that the reason for not including post-term babies, pre-term, IUGR, or small gestational babies is not given. And, for re uh, and the reason for not classifying the term and preterm as uh, appropriate for gestational age, small for gestational age, or IUGR, and large for gestational age is not given. They have not mentioned how cohorts were allocated. Method of the sampling is not well explained. Even chronic illnesses in the mother like TB, then other diseases like gestational hypertension, gestational diabetes mellitus, then uh, premature, uh, preterm premature rupture of the membrane are not mentioned. And there is no distinction between early onset sepsis and law, uh, late onset sepsis explained because they have not mentioned the time of admission of the, uh, or age at which the babies have been admitted. And uh, they have not mentioned why they have used Abgas code for a late onset sepsis case. And mothers receiving antibiotics or steroids during pregnancies were not, were not uh, mentioned. And for fungal pneumonia, uh, they have not mentioned if, is there any evidence of parental nutrition or prolonged ventilations. And here, term babies were mixed with the preterm babies, which, which has resulted in the dilution or overestimation of the results, as both the term and the preterm babies have got a different course. Next is interpretation. So it gives a cautious overall interpretation of results considering the objectives, limitations, uh, and all the analysis, which, uh, which they have done very well. Next is generalizability. They have mentioned other studies which are similar to their uh, uh, studies and it's quite generalizable and we can extrapolate it to the local population also. Next is other information under funding. They have given the source of funding and the role of the funders for the present study. So when we go through the stock checklist, almost all of the uh, criteria has been satisfied by the study. Next is critical appraisal. We'll go through 12 different questions. First is, did the study address a clearly focused issue? Yes, it has addressed where neonatal pneumonia is a very, is the most common cause of mortality and morbidity in uh, neonates. Was the cohort recruited in an acceptable way? We should say no, because they have not mentioned how the cohorts were recruited. And was the exposure accurately measured to minimize bias? No, because they have included both the term and the preterms together and excluded post-term and IUGR of small for gestation age babies. Was the outcome accurately measured to minimize bias? No. Have the authors identified all the confounding factors? We can't tell because, uh, as I've mentioned, PPRM, PRM, etc. are not included. Have they taken account of the confounding factors in the design or analysis? Uh, to, uh, to some extent, they have taken. Was the follow-up of subjects complete enough? No, because they were not able to complete the 1,500 neonates criteria and there were laws to follow up LAMA and absconded patients also. Was the follow-up of the subject long enough? Yes, they have taken a study for one year. What are the results of the study and how precise are the results? So the result of the study showed a blood culture as a predictor of infant mortality. So the results were quite precise also. Do you believe the results? Yes, according to uh, statistically, the results are believable. Can the results be applied to the local population? Yes, it can be applied. Do the results of the study fit with other available evidence? They have mentioned similar studies that have shown the similar results also. So it is yes. What are the implications of this study for practice? So the take home message would be, uh, there can be high prevalence of RSVB and cantidial infections, which can, uh, which can cause neonatal pneumonia. 
and the blood culture positivity can be an independent predictor for mortality in neonatal pneumonia. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Shilpa. I have micro dissected the uh, article and have presented your uh, opinion on that. Oh, I think it's time to hear from the experts whether they are also thinking in our terms. So I request a Kutis uh, to in on the article as well as the presentation. Over to Ram Kutis, sir. Please, sir. First of all, uh, I would like to congratulate uh, both uh, the junior residents who presented. Uh, to, they, were, they have done it very well. Uh, especially, I'm very happy to see that people are using the strobe guidelines and all, which, uh, of course, when we were doing <laughs> residency, we knew absolutely nothing about research, but now I think standards have gone up so much and I'm very happy about that. I'm very happy about that. So I, they have done the, actually they have done the, the, the thing that is expected. They have gone by the, uh, you know, the international guidelines and all that. So having said that about the study itself, I have a few comments. Um, First of all, uh, you know, the person who presented said that the title, there is a guideline in the title that it should uh, reveal what type of study it is. And actually they haven't done that. They have not said it is a cohort, it is a cohort study. They could have easily said it's a cohort. They didn't do that. But that's a minor thing. But then uh, coming to uh, look, looking at the study itself, they had around uh, thousand uh, neonates and then they dropped around half of that so that can actually lead to a serious bias uh, so that is something that we should be careful about because their conclusions are based on half the sample um, and and basically this is because they excluded people who had been put on antibiotics so they could have said that we are not interested in those who are already started on antibiotics and limited the study population to neonates who are not started on antibiotics, in which case it is very representative. But uh, the way they have put it, uh, it is not, it's very difficult to avoid this, like half the people are not accounted for. So that also is a major issue with the study. Then, um, of course, there are minor issues like uh, uh, what I found was if you look at, uh, well, first of all, you know, they have said about the uh, outcomes of the study. Somewhere they mentioned that the outcomes of the study are the factors uh, responsible for uh, neonatal mortality. It's not. The outcome of the study is actually mortality. They are looking at mortality and what causes mortality. So the outcome should be stated as mortality and the secondary outcomes as uh, sepsis or whatever. So that is the way it has to be done. Uh, for the, I mean, I am surprised that even the reviewers did not catch this. Uh, really surprising. Uh, that is one thing. And then they have said that some in one table, I think the table number one, they have they have a column saying relative risk, and the relative risk, the first uh, row in that, the, it's not a relative risk. It's a relative, it's a risk difference. It's not a relative risk is always a ratio. And what they have presented in the first row is a risk difference. A risk difference is different from a risk ratio. Uh, this, I mean, these are minor technical issues. So, I mean, I'm just pointing out because this is a journal club and everybody has to be alert to these uh, things. Not that it uh, it become, makes it a bad paper, but uh, uh, I mean, I would rather find fault with the reviewers. I think it has been poorly reviewed. It could easily have been uh, put in at a better level. And I only only one more point to say that because that is what did they finally find? What they finally found is that if there is sepsis, the babies are more likely to die. I mean, which is nothing new. Isn't it? I mean, this is like reinventing the wheel. So I don't know why they went to all this trouble to find out that. So that is a big question. Uh, but what I would say is that, uh, of course, this kind of a paper is all right, maybe five years before, but now we have uh, very new types of analysis. Uh, if they had recruited more babies, maybe about a thousand babies, they could easily gone into what I would call a machine learning mode in the sense, you know, they could have created a cross validation. I mean, I don't want to the technical details, but the thing is that they divide the data into a training data and the testing data, and then they trade the algorithm because it's purely a predictive algorithm they're looking at. So predictive algorithms can be fine-tuned using this cross-validation uh, technique, which is a very, very modern approach. Uh, I mean, of course, uh, the 
I am not blaming them for not doing it, but I'm just saying that they could have done that. Uh, so these are minor issues, but still the paper is, uh, except for the fact that they didn't say anything new, which we didn't know. That's the only thing that I have to say. Otherwise, it's okay. It's, uh, but then, you know, coming from England and all that, I would have expected something better. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, actually. Now, that was a great review uh, because uh, uh, the, uh, the team has taken, I mean, uh, uh, there is always something uh, new to be learned from teachers. That is what we understand, right? So uh, the topic is open for discussion. And uh, before we go on, I would like to ask Dr. Sundar Singh and Dr. Prajit uh, to give their valuable comments. Over to Dr. Sundar Singh, sir. Yes. Uh, though we, uh, most of the time we uh, generally go for uh, all RCTs and uh, randomized controlled trials. This time we thought uh, uh, we'll have a change and uh, uh, discuss a, a different uh, a study which is based on you know, uh, just an observation uh, study, which is a cohort study. And, uh, and that we can discuss the, the guidelines on how to uh, uh, um, uh, how to analyze it by uh, by the stroke criteria, and uh, uh, as a neonatologist, uh, uh, it, it, uh, I would say that it is important to know uh, that when we are treating in, uh, neonates, we, we may be treating uh, as as, uh, as uh, just as pneumonia, whether uh, because there is uh, just a um, narrow line between uh, pneumonia and sepsis and meningitis and all that, in, uh, as far as in, uh, neonate is concerned, unlike the older age group. And uh, when we are treating, it's uh, it's good to know what are uh, what are the factors which affect uh, the the outcome as well as what are the factors that can re result in death. And uh, as we uh, as I reviewed other uh, studies, uh, many of them had uh, I mean uh, so some of them had shown uh, similar results. Uh, and at the same time, some had uh, specifically said that prematurity and other uh, specific uh, risk factors are there, uh, which. Uh, uh, which will uh, uh, finally uh, alter the outcome of the study. And blood cancer positivity uh, uh, is there that uh, uh, I think some problem with that. Uh, am I audible enough? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, Sundarji. Yes. Please continue. Yes, oh, okay. So, uh, as, uh, as and when we are treating uh, pneumonia, what are the factors that uh, uh, that that should sensitize us uh, each time, which can uh, which can alter the outcome, which can uh, go for a uh, uh, favorable or an unfavorable outcome? So that uh, will be uh, if things are going more for mortality, we, we have to pick pick them up early uh, early enough such that they don't go into full blown sepsis and ultimately we lose the patient because as we know newborns they don't give us time, so so that we can um, uh, we be, uh, like. Uh, um, sending cultures early or, or uh, changing antibiotics early, but at the same time, not going to unnecessary antibiotics also. So, uh, so we have picked up the study so, so that we can have a discussion. Uh, thank you for IAP for uh, uh, taking up this uh, different topic for, the, for discussion. And uh, I invite discussion from others too. Dr. Yeah, thank Pratt. you, thank you, Sundar sir, for your uh, valuable inputs. Actually, and uh, you are absolutely right because uh, there is no point in discussing a perfect an article and uh, telling that it is a good article and all. We should uh, take uh, articles of all kinds, and uh, we should, uh, I mean, make mistakes and get corrected. And uh, that is the whole idea of uh, doing this journal club and all. I'm 100% uh, sure that sir is happy with the presentation of the uh, postgraduates and all. But uh, sir has kind, was kind enough to, I mean. Uh, pinpoint certain things which would have been uh, we, we would have been more careful and that was already now dr prajit sir uh, can you please share your thoughts regarding this presentation i mean uh, the topic i mean the article and uh, the content and everything sir uh, yeah. sir you have to unmute i think sir you are muted uh it's a great pleasure and a honor by Indian Academy of Pediatrics that I am able to present a journal with my postgraduates under the guidance of Sundar Singh sir, who has promoted me to go for this journal club. And with the help of Dr. Babura sir, who is current, who is the head of the department in pediatrics. 
uh with this i would like to share some few thoughts about uh, this journal study uh, although i'm satisfied really by around 65 to 75 percent there are certain uh, limitation i felt that there is some kind of uh, limitations i would like to specify those limitations so in this study uh rest of the analysis are appropriate it's uh, appropriate to the standards so the limitations i would like to focus is that number one that they are mentioned as the predictors of mortality in newborns so the doubt is that in the discussion they are focusing much with the blood culture positivity rate and not with any other clinical features like the tachypnea that respiratory distress they are just commented only on this symptoms and the signs which were not correlated with any of the other studies that i felt particularly whether this is should be considered because their topic is on the neonatal mortality with the prediction so there are lots of in a core study there are lots of independent predictors are there we should be analyzed more in details that's the uh, first thing i would like to suggest about this then the second thing as i uh, discuss about our analysis when we discuss this study so we found a lot of limitations is there like that the preterm uh, preterm term then how their cohorts were adjusted how they are like uh, means whether they are appropriate for gestation age large for gestation age or small for gestation age like this the how they analyze the cohorts that was not uh, mentioned correctly or i felt that it it was a deficient or i maybe means uh, uh, they have not uh, they have already evaluated it and they might not have considered that it may be significant one the third thing sir is uh, the proportion of sir is this they have mentioned that the age of admission is around day 2 to day 5 uh the clear distinction is like uh, day 2 to day 5 and uh, why to why in their study that rsv positivity is considered for like why have they have taken like an rsv positivity in these cases like how did they get that rsv even though they are usually an outborn uh even this uh, uh, even this uh, there is a let me say the incidence of rsv in such a newborns like and if you see the weights of these children sir they are like having a 3.6 kilo uh, something of a 3 2.4 to 2.5 kg usually they should be seen in more on the preterm side the preterm babies they are, are usually having the rsv symptoms so in their mean and the uh, uh, me uh, the uh, average birth weight is considered to be somewhere around 2 2.4 kg sir so uh, this uh, few doubts i have that i want to clarify whether this is uh, truly necessary or not necessary and uh, the next thing is the using the odds ratio that was some some something uh, although it's used in most of the course study i don't deny about it uh, in the course study they can use it like adjust odds ratio they have also mentioned that, that the adjusted odds ratio like what is the concept of using an odds ratio uh in this cohort study so these are the few points i would like to please highlight and can you guide us for this like why is the reason for this uh, things thank you thank you sir for the pertinent uh, issues that we have discussed actually now um, there are a few points uh, dr pujesh sir has raised that uh, needs discussion and all so before going to the discussion uh, shall i ask dr patnavan sir to give his views on the topic sir Well, uh, I missed the first part of the presentation due to some problem. The laptop didn't show up the web. But anyway, I remember what was present in the trial run. The most important thing is, uh, I would say, what Raman Guti said. You know, that is, uh, of course, the topic is well discussed and uh, very well analyzed. But you know, newborn pneumonia is pneumonia, and then when you have a blood culture positive, it is called sepsis. and everybody knows that sepsis has a higher mortality than pneumonia neonatal pneumonia without the line is rather thin therefore the conclusion is not very interesting and uh, probably as dr ramanuti said we are reinventing the wheel and further they have said the blood culture for pneumococcus was not done i don't understand why it cannot be done it is uh, if you send a blood culture you normally get Uh, they have done even fungal cultures. Why not uh, pneumococcal culture? I don't, I don't realize it. And uh, if I remember rightly uh, from the last presentation, in the aims of the presentation, they said that not only uh, they looked at the social and many other factors. Can they can we put up what was the first slide? You know, the aim of the study. Uh, social can can we have that? Is it possible? What was the aim of the study for this? Uh, 
Um, and none of this is commented in the final result, whether they were analyzed yes. or anything. Uh, that's what I found a little odd. Can you go to the aim of the study? Um, yes, yes. Uh, evaluate the socio-dermographic factors, maternal age, maternal fever, sorry, uh, uh, parity, mode of delivery, clinical features. None of this is mentioned in the final discussion, I think. Uh, social, uh, whether the social, how they analyze social demographic factors and uh, the maternal fever is considered to be a very important indicator. And uh, when, page, when the mothers are having maternal fever, they are supposed to give them prophylactic antibiotic, where the prolonged rupture of the membranes the antibiotic criteria was uh, prophylactic antibiotic was followed, etc. is not clear. That's all I would like to say. And another thing is pneumonia, they're based on uh, radiological features, but any child with uh, fever, with, uh, with or without fever, with tachypnea. And if you have lung signs, definitely it becomes a neonatal pneumonia as far as I think. You can't put any other diagnosis even if the X-ray is normal, because X-rays tend to be normal in the first 48 to 72 hours. Whether they classified it also into pneumonia is not very clear from the uh, description. This is what I would suggest. Uh, why no, no pneumococci? Of course, the, uh, the conclusion we have already said. And uh, the why no uh, much Probably the maternal age, maternal fever, parity did not have any bearing on the neonatal pneumonia, but whether the analysis was pointed out, I'm not sure. That's all I have to say. Thank you, sir, for uh, bringing up those points, actually. Uh, can we stop the screen share? Thank you very much. Now, before we move forward, um, we have a lot of uh, queries on the clinical aspects of this uh, neonatal and pneumonia and uh, it's a diagnosis and all those things. I think Dr. Purushottam sir, uh, can you please comment on the uh, that aspects as well as uh, share your views, sir? First of all, I congratulate uh, Dr. Shilpa and Hari Priya. As uh, Ramgudi sir said, uh, uh, the, 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 the excellent presentation. And uh, I agree with uh, uh, both uh, Ramgudi sir and uh, experts' view, as the Vadnam sir said. Uh, in this case, the limitations uh, which was mentioned in the last slide, there are a lot many limitations out of which the group of patients to newborns, when you're choosing the preterm and term, especially it's not mentioned which were the uh, extent of the prematurity and this problem, the reasons and the clinical presentations, all these things are totally different uh, when you consider preterm, low birth weight, and the term, the chances of sepsis. As uh, uh, Padma sir rightly pointed out, there is a possibility of group B beta hemolytic, uh, this uh, streptococci, which will present with the dyspnea, just like HMD. When you're including the preterms, there can be possibility of actual case presenting with the HMD-like picture. So in the culture, any pneumonia situations, uh, we should be including all the probable organisms, especially when the premature preterms are included, the, that organism cannot be missed in the newborn. It's such an important thing. And one very important thing is there is a Klebsiella, but other gram negatives are also the only Klebsiella is the organism in the 23%, then viruses and fungus. So what is seen as a case of a fungal infections usually happen after the first week. So that itself says, though, so there were long days of hospitalization. That's the reason why this much a percentage of fungal infection also is there in the spectrum of the infections. Okay, sir. More than the bacterial, there were fungal. That means the longer duration of hospital stay were there. And the thing is about the viral thing, RSV, how far they they are the responsible. H1N1 was the, the other thing. Where they were whether they were contributing this thing. And uh, there was a mention of this thing, the recommendation of the vaccine for this thing to the newborns. 
So is it justified? No vaccines in the newborn should be recommended because if at all you want to prevent and subsist due to an organism in the newborn, that can be administered to the mother. So in the whooping of the other product protection, if you want to, if you think that there's a particular virus is responsible for an organism is responsible for the newborn, the, the, the advice would be to vaccinate the mother, not the newborn babies. So they, 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 uh, one doubt, uh, 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 Ramgood sir, in a situation where we are arranging a multicentric study where a sepsis is the problem, where sepsis is decided by multiple factors, the policy of the management may be a little bit different among the different institutions. So that may also alter. So multicentric studies, the uniformity of the protocols of the management also can uh, lead to a change in the, uh, in the, 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 whether that was considered in the study design. You are absolutely right. I mean, if this were to be a meta-analysis, I would say this is a problem of heterogeneity. I mean, this is not the uniform, population is not uniform in all the centers. So you have to account for that. So I don't, I mean, I don't think the analysis has done that. So they have clubbed everything together, which means, um, uh, you know, I think you are absolutely uh, put the point, stuck the nail on the head or whatever, you know, so I think that's a point. And the thing is this inclin, the, uh, inclin uh, it should have been better, is it not? <laughs> What does it mean? What is uh, it? Is a uh, it is a uh, Bill Gates uh, funding international funding? What does it mean? I just don't know. That's why I'm asking. Inclan, uh, if I may explain, uh, sorry, if I may explain, Inclan, yeah. Inclan uh, is the International Clinical uh, Epidemiology Network. Uh, part of what I mean, India is also part of that. I think we have a lot of problems. Lot of problems. Problem. I don't know what is happening. <laughs> Can somebody control this. Okay. Okay. Uh, Inclan is the uh, you know the International Clinical Epidemiology Network, which was uh, actually funded originally by the Rockefeller Foundation. And their idea was that clinicians are not doing research, so they should be trained in research. And I, if you remember Dr. Patnavan, your classmate uh, and great friend, Dr. Ramdas Pisharadi and many other people were trained in the US on Inclan fellowships. Uh, but uh, some of us who were in public health, uh, especially if, uh, even people from CMC always uh, expressed the doubt that whether this will actually result in better research and I really don't know. But anyway, that has continued. Now they have, the Rockefeller has stopped the funding. I think they are getting funding from various other sources. There is an Inclan Foundation in India and a gentleman called Dr. Marendra Arora is, uh, is from Ames, is a director. He is a gastroenterologist. They're doing a lot of studies and uh, Dr. Rajmohan, probably whom you know, yeah. was uh, involved with that for That's a long so time. And he is continuing to do that uh, many, I mean, they have a teaching program in Trivandrum and all that. So that is the England Foundation. So from the Rockefeller funding, they have now shifted to a local England Foundation kind of thing. So the idea was that people, I mean, I think it has had a partial success. Like I would say that, you know, as I said earlier, these postgraduates or the residents uh, speaking about strobe guidelines, I can't imagine in my time. <laughs> we are absolutely ignorant about all those things. But England uh, has brought in that kind of an awareness about research and the modalities of research and the structure of research. I think that is a good thing. So to that extent, I think we should appreciate that. But that is what is England is all about. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you that uh, I mean the stroke guideline. I came to know two months back when some other PG person did the same. I have never heard about it. Anyway, our knowledge is only p-value and standard deviation and some 
uh, yeah, knowledge you know. always gets updated, and I should not. Yeah. Think, I should. I should think that we should be happy about yes, it. Sir. Yeah, I am very, very happy. I'm really learning from this uh, thing more than teaching. <laughs> but uh, what I thought was uh, they must be monitoring the quality of the studies also. Isn't it? Do you want to get yeah, a? I, think I was surprised that uh, yeah. it was not a very high quality study, and incline from incline, I I I expected something better. So that's all I said. So. <laughs> Actually, when uh, Dr. Anju sent me this article, the moment I saw Inklin, I just said, okay, go ahead, you know, without even reading the rest. But uh, later, when these uh, young girls presented it so well and analyzed it, and found that they mixed up uh, in a neonatal mortality preterm and term babies together, I was really shocked, to tell you the least. That's only thing. Yeah, that's an important thing. And I, I I think I forgot to mention that what they could have done is they could have done a stratified analysis looking at the gestational age. Hmm. Uh, and it would have been far better than this. I mean, all these are expected from a study with England credentials. That is what, the only thing that upset me actually. Anyway. Sir, um, uh, sir, can I ask a few doubts, Kari, sir, actually? Uh, the first is sir, regarding the generalizability that uh, uh, our uh, analysis uh, analysis has person has told us that it can be generalized to it can be uh, generalized to the general population uh, something like that actually i mean uh, is that uh, i mean uh, on what uh, basis can we tell that i was just wondering actually uh, can can we can you throw a little more light on that uh, madam actually or, I mean, if I, if I were to answer that, you know, their their conclusion is so very innocuous in that sense, as you know, as if you if you have infection, uh, you are likely. To, I mean, the, the neonate is likely to die. I mean, that is generalizable, even without the study. <laughs> you could say that. So, to that extent, it is generalizable, and I think they, what they have said is right. But uh, okay, yeah. uh, sir, one more doubt I have. Sir has told us that uh, mortality was not taken into account uh, during the uh, outcome this thing and that. But uh, my doubt is that, sir, their primary objective was to uh, study the predictors of, uh, I mean, um, pneumonia in the. Yeah, I understand. That is a small thing, but I think it's important. The objective is fine. Objective is to study the predictors. But what is the outcome that is being studied? And they have said the outcome is the predictors. No, outcome is mortality. They are studying mortality, right? So that uh, I think is wrong to say that uh, looking at the predict predictors uh, of mortality. So the outcome they are studying is mortality. Sir, one more doubt, sir. Actually, can you just throw a little light on this uh, binary logistic regression analysis? Sir? <laughs> uh, binary logistic regression is the classical way of uh, looking at outcomes which are binary. Binary means yes or no. You die or you survive, you uh, get a complication or you don't get a complication. So anything which, an outcome which is uh, yes or no can be uh, studied by using binary logistic regression. And of course, there are a lot of technicalities associated with that. And the thing is that the binary logistic regression uh, if you do that, it will, you it you will give. I mean, you will get. You will be able to arrive at the odds ratio. Now, that is another thing I forgot to mention. This being a cohort, I mean, this is again technical, but uh, I wouldn't say it's a huge fault. But uh, being again a high level study, um, I mean, if you have a case control study, you can only look at odds ratios. But having a cohort study, they could have easily gone into what is known as a log linear regression rather than a logistic regression. And log linear regression will give you the uh, real rate uh, risk ratio. Now, as somebody mentioned, the, per people, uh, the person who presented said that odds ratio exaggerates or overestimates the risk, isn't it? I mean, somebody said that. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, it's very correct. So, so that to that extent, it could have been avoided if they have done what is known as a log linear regression. I mean, this is very technical, but uh, I mean, as I said, for, uh, coming from Inkland or, you know, if you, it is from a local medical college, I, I, I have no problem. But uh, coming from uh, high level people like Inkland, I think it's a little bit. Uh, sir, similarly, uh, sir, Dr. Prajit sir has also asked a, uh, query about this uh, using this uh, adjusted uh, odds ratio. Is it not Dr. Pujit sir? Sir was telling about that. Yes, sir. They have used an adjusted odd ratio in one one of the places where they have given the results. They have used an adjusted odds ratio, which is acceptable. 
but uh, using a odds ratio was one big doubt for me like whether it is applicable to all studies like every cohort should follow that odds ratio yes or no that was the doubt because it is mentioned in many of the places yes you are allowed to do a odds ratio but you should be judicious and be uh, precarious while talking about the odds ratio because it can uh, make the ex uh, researcher bias about it that odds ratio will uh, more the odds ratio and more is the risk of that child particular case going to have the outcome so and the thing is that sir if you see the if i may comment on that so the 95th percent confidence interval so the numbers are large sir they are not uh, quite small means the exposure if it is more uh, it is said to be the outcome is large so it uh, decreases the precision of the study like lesser is the uh, lesser is the uh, odds ratio numbers more is the precision that it could uh, suggested so this is the one thing i would like to like comment on this 95th percent confidence interval so that's the point about this odds ratio difficulties in this studies thank you you are absolutely right the first point is whether odds ratio is appropriate measure uh, see uh, uh, odds ratio becomes appropriate measure in a case control study because you have no other option yes you can only arrive at the odds ratio but in a cohort you can do better you can actually do a actually do a risk ratio using a log linear regression that is the first point second point as you said when you have very wide confidence interval what it tells you is that your estimate is very imprecise it's very very i mean it's not a very correct uh, you know precision is not there it's some like a wild guess so so that is also there so they, if when when you have wide confidence interval and the number is very huge actually it doesn't mean anything it just means that it's huge i mean it's actually you are not estimating correctly that is what it tells you probably it is high but uh, your estimation may not be very correct so uh, that point also you are absolutely right so those are things which uh, they could have done better that is what i feel that is what i said you know if you especially coming from a very highly specialized uh, center or rather you know like england and all that uh, i would have expected a better analysis because they have access to better statistical support thank you sir prashanthan sir i have one doubt actually sir uh, regarding the uh, sir uh, the viral studies were positive in the survival cities seen so i mean uh, it would be stretching far but uh, does this uh, viral uh, pneumonia do they have a better uh, prognosis or something like that sir i mean we are not considering the preterm uh, term sga aga here i was just asking sir is there anything like that because no we can no uh, our experience with uh, this uh, neonatal period viral infection sir deciding the mortality in the so from our experience it's not much sir that is true sir i mean we are also no, not doing that much viral studies also probably not sir sir and our holds i have seen that uh, they have told that it is 63.7 percentage per uh, percentage were hardly having tachypnea and that so in a particular in a diagnostic uh, criteria tachypnea is a, one of the most important diagnostic criteria as far as pneumonia is considered sir so what is the clinic uh, the clinical uh, message that we are we have to take sir from that sir uh, in, in 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 fact uh, the as uh, already pointed out the many of the clinical uh, parameters are not given much important they should have given importance to that part also ഞാൻ <laughs> 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 babra sir uh, can you please share your thoughts sir i think sir is having some connections sundar sir uh, <coughs> please call babra sir and uh, uh, and uh, which 
Yes, Hari Priya. And we have an idea which journal was this published? Hari Priya, uh, Indian Pediatrics. Unmute. It's an Indian Pediatrics. Yeah, Indian Pediatrics. Indian Pediatrics. Indian Pediatrics. Indian Pediatrics. Can I just make a comment? Please, sir. Sorry for having huh? wait, wait, sir. Please, no, sir. I, I, I'm, I'm not going to talk about the uh, research part. Just the word. There is a word predict. And uh, there is an, another article uh, in IAP, today, uh, IAP activities today. It was the prediction of Prediction model for pneumonia among children in emergency department. The predict means it denotes something that will happen in future. In physics, you can predict. In human science, prediction is very difficult. You can anticipate or you can understand. So you cannot predict the weather. You can understand the weather. So since there are multiple variables, you cannot predict. So that word is there in statistics for quite a long period. Maybe that is why still it is kept there. Now, I think there should be a new word or something different. So prediction means it's something absolute. That creates some problems also when you predict something to the patients and they expect something and that is not happening. That can create conflicts, etc. Thank you. Can I answer yes, that? Yes, sir, please, sir. Uh, yeah, I think you have raised a very important point. Uh, predict uh, in statistics has a very technical meaning. Just like when you say bias in statistics has a very specific meaning. It's not bias. It's not, it's not partiality. Bias is not partiality in statistics. It is a systematic deviation from the truth. So it is just like that predict means can you put a uh, value on the unknown based on what we know about something? So that's all prediction means. So in that sense, prediction has a very technical meaning in statistics. So, but as you said, people confuse prediction with future prediction. <laughs> when a statistician predicts, there is always a prediction interval. I mean, so it's a prediction between two levels. So it can happen between 75%, 75% chance of something happening. So. So that is the way they go about it. Second point I want to raise is prediction now has become much more accurate. So that is what, why I said they could have done some machine learning techniques to make the prediction more accurate. Now, now they are predicting protein structure very accurately using uh, statistical learning. You know, the whole concept of statistical learning is revolutionary. And even I think in five years time, uh, it will probably replace a lot of jobs in medicine. I think we have to be prepared for that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, sir, for that, actually. That is a great snippet. Um, Sundar Singh, sir, Babura, sir, is sir available, sir? Uh, actually, I was not able to get him through. Uh, I don't know, maybe some uh, connection. Maybe, sir, is busy. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, if anybody want to discuss anything, uh, uh, the forum is open. They can unmute themselves and uh, uh, yes, share. Uh, uh, one comment, uh, as yes, usual, Binoy sir will always call, uh, come with uh, <laughs> some very valid, uh, thought-provoking comments. And uh, as Ramgood sir clearly, uh, this is prediction, the word 100%. So yes. instead of that, uh, the percentage of level of uh, prediction can be add on to that uh, words in future. The exact word prediction means 100% probability. So, can we change in the statistics? Instead of prediction, the level, the uh, how much prediction? Yeah, I mean, see, when statisticians talk about prediction, they always have a level. They always associate a probability. So, they, they put a limit on the prediction. So, it's like the prediction interval is between this and this. So, it can be anywhere between. So that is why, you know, like uh, you said in the odds ratio, there is a huge confidence interval. So the thing is that it's a very imprecise prediction. That's what it means. So for the statistician, there is no confusion. But unfortunately, statistics uses many common terms like significance. It has a statistical meaning. Error has a statistical meaning. Bias has a statistical meaning. Similarly, prediction has a statistical meaning. So that is how we have to understand that. 
Thanks, sir, for the excellent class, actually. Thanks, Purushottam, sir. Uh, over to Dr. Rukmini, madam. Um, nothing more to say, uh, Dr. Anju. Yeah. And uh, it was a nice session. Madam, as, uh, as a faculty in Mogambi, uh, uh, Madam has mother, Madam is uh, one of the Madam has recently appeared in an internationally international journal. Congratulations, Madam, actually. Thank so, you. So, <laughs> uh, we would like to hear from you, Madam. Please. Lanju, it's okay. It was a very good presentation. I don't have much to add. So already everything is discussed. It was very good. <laughs> Thank okay. you so much. Uh, I just want to say one thing. Please, sir. We, uh, th we call this the journal club and not journal meeting. This is because to make everybody aware, especially people like aware, that the journal which the articles which come in multiple journals, they don't have the same uh, value uh, unless you analyze it very carefully. Right. When you look it from all angles, then only you come to know how good it is or the good or the bad about it. <clears throat> Therefore, uh, this, now it, this was an inkling study. It did not come about very well after a microscopic look at the truth about it. Anyway, that's what we want. We yeah. want the PGs to understand that. In fact, when I was in the uh, in a name, there was a statistician just like, there was a pediatrician just like Ramaguti, a pediatrician turned uh, this one. He would bring in articles from New England Journal and Lancet and ask the opinion of all the consultants. Are you going to change the practice? He will ask. And he is a very consultant pediatrician. And many times we said, why not? This New England Journal. And then he will analyze it and uh, really at the end, uh, we will feel what is this? How this is get got published? <laughs> now this is in Indian pediatrics. Don't there are surprises even in international journals? I must say that. But I don't know to analyze them the way he does. We must pick up some international journals also, and then we would like to see how Ramaguti analyzes it in those countries. Thank you so much, sir. Actually, I mean, this session was a, a, a great session and an eye opener. Please don't be misled by the number of participants that we are seeing here because uh, I have uploaded uh, almost all the general clubs of ours in IAP Toronto's YouTube channel. And it is very surprising to see that within uh, one week, around 200 plus views, and one month, it is under 300 plus views is there for our uh, journal uh, club. So even if the, the PGs are otherwise busy or um, uh, faculties or even practicing pediatricians are busy otherwise, they find time to watch our journal club. And especially, <clears throat> I cannot uh, uh, say in words the uh, we have the gratitude we are having to Prashatwan sir, the valuable contribution sir is giving by taking part in this general club as a regular uh, <laughs> attendee mm -hmm. as well as contributor. And uh, I think it is almost uh, eight forty-five. And uh, one point, I, 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 I would. I am so happy to see that Ravankuti sir has opened up more, and we are able to bring more and more out of him. Actually, so initially we were very. I mean, uh, out of respect and all, we were not. Uh, I mean, uh, bold enough to ask questions. Uh, of, uh, being afraid that uh, we may ask uh, actually even stupid questions and that, but uh, absolutely, sir is so patient and so positive. So, sir is actually, uh, you know, like appreciating all of our questions. He is taking time to uh, answer all of them. And today, we have uh, brought up so many uh, queries from the clinical as well as the uh, epidemiological, I mean, statistical part of this article. And as Purusha uh, Padana sir was telling you, uh, I mean, this is what actually we want from the uh, Gen Club and our. And Rukmini, uh, madam, can we wind up Ramguti, sir? Yeah. Purushottam, sir. Yeah, I just want to tell you, I mean, uh, I, I mean, I'm very happy to answer any questions. Uh, I mean, if I don't know, I'll say, yes, I don't know. That's another thing. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but you see, why I'm really happy that uh, I remember, I can't forget my past. So I know how ignorant I was when I was uh, doing my residency. So I am very happy to see that uh, nowadays people are much more sharp and they're much well read. And you know, that's a very great thing. So that's why I'm very happy to share my ideas with uh, anybody. Thank you so much. We, we, one we last not... comment, actually, Ramaguti, their knowledge of pediatrics in certain fields, some people say they are taught in the private and all are very good. When I came back, I was really surprised 
and the knowledge in which the DNB candidates coming even from private institutions are. And number two, Dr. Anju, I would like to say that if somebody is watching the YouTube outside Trivandrum, about 50% is due to because we have Ramangutti on the panel. <laughs> that is the reason they are coming. So. They want to know what exactly is telling. And I keep reminding Rukmini and Anju that I was the person who brought him in. Okay, that's <laughs> my... <laughs> yeah, thank you, sir. <laughs> I, I, I always, I always consider myself as one among, I mean, all of you. So it's not... A... No, no, you have a, you have a reputation outside Trivandrum. Generally, <laughs> pediatricians don't accept another pediatrician's opinion. <laughs> They're not very keen. Rushottaman sir wouldn't have joined uh, from tissue uh, week after week, uh, month after month, unless you are there in the family. I don't think that is true. <laughs> <laughs> thanks we for can, hearing. Thanks we for can ask stupid questions, but we should not do stupid things. 100% sir, 100% sir. 100%. 100%. Okay, 100%. thank you then. We'll okay. conclude. Oh, yeah, so concluding. Thank you all very much. I'm very happy thank to you. be part of this. Thank, thank you. you. So let us conclude. I would like to thank uh, uh, Dr. Sundar Singh, Dr. Prajit sir, uh, the two Haripriya PG and uh, Shilpa madam, Shilpa doctor, Prashatavan sir, Binoy sir, uh, Dr. Ramguti sir, Dr. Puni madam and Patanav sir and all those who have joined and uh, wish you a great time ahead. Thank you and good night. Till we meet again, take care. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.